If you're currently a Windows user and are thinking about making the switch to Linux but aren't sure where to start, then this video is for you. Now about a year ago, I made a video going over my experiences with Linux gaming and I demoed several games I was currently playing. Overall, it's been a great experience, and in fact, it's been so good that I finally ditched Windows. At that time, the only reason I was holding on to Windows was for gaming and for a few productivity apps, but I managed to find alternatives on Linux for every application. I also made another video talking about productivity software on Linux, so if you do any content creation then be sure to check out that video as well. The link is in the video description. Now my Linux gaming video wound up being extremely popular, and I received a ton of comments on that one. I noticed there were quite a few people asking about which distro to choose and general questions on how to get everything set up. So I'll be addressing both of those things. In this video, I'll be going over the various distros that are available in 2024 and give my suggestions on which distro to choose. And then in my next video, I'll be showing step-by-step -step how to run games in Steam and give other helpful tips to have a smooth experience with Linux gaming. Now let's first start off by talking about compatibility, which is something I could have spent a little more time talking about in my previous video. So when it comes to single player games, the vast majority of them will work perfectly fine on Linux. Some might require custom launch options, but almost all single player games will run straight out of the box. All you need to do is enable Proton and Steam. But when it comes to multiplayer games, compatibility might be an issue depending on what you play. The multiplayer games that I play personally all work fine, but certain anti-cheat software is incompatible with Linux at the moment, so not all multiplayer games are compatible. To be clear, it's not the fault of Linux, but rather it's the developers of these games who are too stubborn to allow compatibility. But times are changing as the Steam Deck continues to gather more Steam, so I imagine those stubborn developers will give in sooner or later. If you want to see a list of which multiplayer games are compatible, then visit areweanticheatyet.com. As of right now, it looks like more than 50% of all multiplayer games are working, which isn't too bad. But unfortunately, several popular games such as Fortnite, Battlefield, and Valorant aren't compatible at the moment. So now let's talk about the differences between the various Linux distros. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about this and give a complete explanation so that you're not second guessing yourself later on. I'll first start out by saying that even though there's countless different distros available, there's actually not too much of a difference between them under the hood. If someone really wanted to, they could transform one distro into another, for the most part. There can be some exceptions, but the main differences really come down to the desktop environment and the package manager. The desktop environment is mainly cosmetic, although there are some differences in functionality with how you interact with the GUI. But at the end of the day, this all comes down to personal preference. Some popular desktops include GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, and XFCE, but there are quite a few more as well. Some distros allow you to choose which desktop you want during installation, while other distros only offer one desktop by default. The other major difference between distros is the package manager, and this affects how you install and manage downloaded software. It can also affect how up-to-date the software and applications are. You can see there are only a few main distros, including Debian, Fedora, and Arch. There are several more main distros such as Red Hat, OpenSUSE, Gentoo, and more, but I didn't include them because these tend to be more geared for industry and power users. Now the main difference between Debian, Fedora, and Arch comes down to the age of their software packages. For example, if you download video editing software such as DaVinci Resolve or Shotcut on Debian, then by default you can expect to get a version of that software that's at least a year old. 
but if you were to install these on an Arch-based distro, you'll be able to get the absolute latest version of that software by default. And if you go with Fedora, then those packages will be slightly older than those found in Arch. The trade-off here comes down to reliability versus the latest features. If you want the absolute most stable experience, then you'll likely want to go for a Debian distro. But if you want the latest features and drivers, then you'll probably want an Arch-based distro. But to be honest, the difference isn't as big as you might think, and Arch still provides a very stable experience. It's also possible to configure Debian to use what's known as the testing or unstable repositories, which will provide the latest software similar to Arch. So the difference between Debian and Arch isn't as big as some people make it out to be. But there's actually one other thing which I almost forgot to mention, and that's the difference between a standard release distro and a rolling release. Part of the reason why Debian has old packages is because they only get major updates when a new version of Debian is released. After a new version is released, the previous version will continue to get security updates for a while, but only for a limited time. If you want to continue to receive updates, you'll need to update to the newer version, which can bring substantial changes. Most of the time the upgrade process is painless though. The current version of Debian is codenamed Bookworm, and it's the 12th version. Likewise, Fedora is also a stable release, and it's currently on the 39th version. Now a rolling release, on the other hand, doesn't have new versions. Every time you update your system, you'll receive the latest packages, and as a result, your system will always be on the latest version as long as you keep it up to date. You never have to worry about doing a major upgrade. Instead, you'll continue to receive incremental updates indefinitely. Arch is a popular example of a rolling release. OpenSUSE also offers a rolling release, but in general, rolling releases aren't as common, and the vast majority of distros will follow a standard release schedule. But like I mentioned a minute ago, it is possible to configure Debian with the unstable repo, which will effectively change it to a rolling release. So again, the differences aren't as big as some people make them out to be, as there is some gray area. Now all the other distros I've included here are actually just spin-offs of Debian, Fedora, and Arch. These spin-offs usually have slight modifications to cater to certain users, or have customized desktop environments to provide unique aesthetics. Some of these spin-offs are more heavily modified than others. For the most part, these are fine, but in specific scenarios, these modifications might cause issues, and you're at the mercy of that distro's developer to make the necessary updates when problems arise, unless you know what you're doing and can fix the problem yourself. Which is why I generally recommend sticking to a vanilla distro, or a spin-off that's close to vanilla, instead of a heavily modified distro. So when it comes to picking a distro for gaming, it turns out most distros will work perfectly fine. The more cutting edge distros such as Arch and Fedora might offer slightly better performance and better compatibility with the latest games, but the difference is pretty small. Let's first talk about a few commonly recommended distros and then I'll give my personal recommendation. Let's start with Nobara which is a spin-off of Fedora that's specifically catered to gaming, which is why it's commonly recommended to gamers, but it actually doesn't do anything that special. It does have some useful pre-installed software that you'll likely want for gaming, but you can install all that software on any other distro. If gaming is all you really care about and want something that's pre-configured and ready to go, then it might be a good choice, so feel free to try it out if you fall into this category. The same thing applies to Garuda Linux, which is a spin-off of Arch that's geared for gamers. But for most people, I recommend a more vanilla distro which will likely be better for general use. Since I imagine most of you will want to do other things with your PC reliably than just gaming. Overall, I think an Ubuntu-based distro is the best choice for beginners. 
Ubuntu is actually a spin-off of Debian, but it's probably the most popular distro around, and as a result, it has a vast number of guides and tutorials. Most of these tutorials also work for Debian, but Debian usually requires extra configurations and isn't as noob-friendly as Ubuntu. So that's why I recommend Ubuntu for new users. Linux Mint and Pop! OS are examples of Ubuntu-based distros, and these are good choices. However, my favorite Ubuntu distro is Kubuntu, which is extremely close to vanilla Ubuntu, except it uses the KDE desktop instead of GNOME. Personally, I'm not a fan of GNOME, and I feel that KDE offers a more user-friendly experience, especially for people who are coming from Windows. It's also highly customizable, so that's why Kubuntu is the distro I recommend, and this is what I'll be using for my guide in the next video. Now for those of you who want to try an Arch-based distro so that you'll have the latest drivers by default, I recommend trying Endeavor OS, which is extremely close to vanilla Arch with a few minor tweaks. I've actually already made a guide on Endeavor OS, so if you're interested I suggest watching that video as well. Another popular Arch-based distro that gets recommended a lot is Manjaro, but I'm personally not a fan since they make some significant changes from vanilla Arch, so I think Endeavor OS is the better choice. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that AMD GPUs are usually recommended for Linux since the drivers are built into the kernel, but NVIDIA has come a long way, and these days, NVIDIA GPUs will work just fine. Alright, so that wraps up today's video. It turns out it doesn't make that much of a difference which distro you choose for gaming. But like I said, an Ubuntu-based distro is probably the best choice for beginners who want to use their computer for more than just games, since Ubuntu has the most resources and guides available. If you found this to be helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. In my next video, I'll be showing step-by-step -step how to set up Steam and run games on Ubuntu and other distros. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can get notified when that video comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.